Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com for premium picks. Look us up in the sports section on Roku. We're there. Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Let's get at it. Let's talk about this last weekend across the board, some subject matter in some recent videos. Let's talk about three fights that happened this weekend that I made videos on, as well as the recent performance of Bitcoin. Now, for those not keeping track, understand that Bitcoin today has a market cap now north of $8 million. As I've said in earlier videos, and I want you to track the price of Bitcoin from when I first started making Bitcoin videos here online to now, right? Just understand that Bitcoin is doing quite well. It's not over $500 a coin. It's now over $600 a coin, and it's bordering on $700 a coin. Understand that when you're talking about disruptive technologies, technologies that simply do things better than the prevailing technology, right? Think the automobile. Think the telephone. Think the personal computer. Right? It's not a Ponzi scheme when you're investing in something like the automobile. Right? It's not a cult. It's people who realize that transportation is a necessity in life and that this new technology does it better than the horse and buggy. Right? Fiat currency by comparison to Bitcoin is horse and buggy-ish right just keep track of Bitcoin as I said before you'll be surprised to learn that Bitcoin right now is just in the early stages of its growth there are hundreds of billions of dollars of financial transactions in the world every day just understand that Bitcoin in the last 24 hours was involved in more than 30 million dollars of financial transactions. That's going to climb exponentially. The situation in the Ukraine right now, understand the rebel forces in the Ukraine are partly funded by Bitcoin donations. Why? Because supporters of the revolution there understand that Bitcoin is the quickest way to get money from here to there. Right? Much faster than a credit card transaction, etc. Right? So take a look at Bitcoin's performance. It's been eye opening. It's not up marginally, folks. It's up in a big way. And this is only the beginning. If there's one bet to make in 2014, it's on Bitcoin. Right? Full disclosure I have some Bitcoin. I also have some Max coin. I also have some Dark coin. I encourage you to look at each of these cryptocurrencies let's talk about this weekend okay this was a rough weekend for me as you know it's a never-ending battle against the casino right some weekends we're gonna come out ahead other weekends the casino is gonna come out ahead this weekend the casino came out ahead it's not the first time it's happened it certainly won't be the last time understand that gambling involves huge risk okay so there's less beer for us. The casino beat me this weekend. What I want to do is to talk about what I expected and what happened. Right? First, let's talk about the fight that delivered for us. Ricky Burns versus Terrence Crawford. My recommended play there was to take the over nine and a half rounds. As I said in the pre-fight video, which is still up. I expected the challenger, Terrence Crawford, to beat the champion, Ricky Burns. But I thought your safest play here was to take the over nine and a half rounds. The fight went the distance, right? All of the overs won in this fight. Let me just point out that the key to both of these guys, both the champion and the challenger, the secret of their success is that they're both excellent defensive fighters. As you watch both, you'll notice they keep their hands up. They're 
is a lot in the way of hitting them in the face. Both of these fighters catch a lot of punches on their forearms, right? They also know how to clinch. They know how to stop the other fighter when they're inside, right? So you'll notice in this fight, there are moments where Ricky Burns grabs both of Terrence Crawford's hands to prevent Crawford from doing further damage inside. All of this suggested a longer fight, right? Let me also point out, too, that Crawford skillfully, and Crawford, to me, is a big-time talent you need to keep a track of, right? Crawford skillfully tried to use his forearm when he came inside to give himself space between himself and Burns to in part prevent Burns from tying him up. Of course, the referee took away that move, right, by warning Crawford about that forearm use. So then Crawford, who, in my opinion, won the fight because he's faster, he is able to move in quicker when he's in the pocket, right? He also is, in my opinion, better in terms of mixing both offense with defense, right? In my opinion, Ricky Burns shuts down at times, right? When you come in and you're bum-rushing him and you're throwing a lot of punches, Ricky Burns will stop throwing punches. He'll literally get into a shell. As I said earlier, he turtles, right? When you come inside, I believe that Crawford was better at being able to be defensive while also being offensive, right? So Crawford is now the champion. Ricky Burns does not plan on quitting. He plans on fighting Miguel Vasquez. In my opinion, that's the wrong opponent because Vasquez is special, right? I would expect Vasquez to win that fight, right? Vasquez has a better jab, in my opinion, than uh, does uh, Terrence Crawford. Vasquez also has a really mean inside uppercut, right, and knows how to handle himself inside a little bit better than Terrence Crawford, right? We'll see what Ricky Burns does next. Just understand that Burns's defense is exemplary. Crawford's defense is exemplary. That meant more bear for us on this fight as the fight went over. Let's talk about the next fight, and this one actually surprised me, right? Vasyl Lomachenko versus Orlando Salido, right? Now, a few things surprised me here. I was surprised that Salido came in overweight and would give up his title on the scales. That's a shocker. I know that fighters are out there trying desperately to win titles, that title shots at times are the highlight of your career, that having a title is very valuable. I simply don't understand how a fighter can sign for a fight and then not make weight. That shocked me, right? Let me tell you, though, the biggest surprise, and I do mean by far the biggest surprise. In fact, it was the biggest surprise of my weekend was Vasyl Lomachenko's stamina. Understand that Lomachenko had never fought 10 rounds, much less 12 rounds. Never. Right? Maybe in sparring, but that's about it. Typically, when an amateur goes into a 12-round fight, there are concerns about his stamina. Right? Pete Rademacher, who famously lost to Floyd Patterson right, in his debut fight as the reigning Olympic heavyweight champion, in interviews after the fight talked about how he simply didn't have the stamina to go the distance, how he was an amateur accustomed to three-round fights, and now suddenly here you are in a fight four times as long. Now, I know that Lomachenko had been involved in the World Series of Boxing, but understand they weren't fighting 12-round fights in that tournament. Also, understand the level of competition wasn't remotely close 
to what he was facing in facing world champion Orlando Salido. Now it was interesting because the first round of this fight Lomachenko's on his front foot. He's trying to hunt down Orlando Salido. You can imagine as I was watching that first round I thought more beer for us. There is no way that this fight could possibly go the distance with Lomachenko on his front foot initiating the action. Right? By the way, for those who don't know, my pre-fight suggested play on this was to take both guys to win by knockout. Right? I thought the safe play, as if there's a safe play in gambling, was that this fight wouldn't go the distance. Well, let me tell you, in the second round, something interesting happened. Orlando Salido decided to get on his front foot. Right? Not only that, Orlando Salido, with a huge weight advantage, understand Salido came in the ring weighing about 10 pounds more than Lomachenko. Right? Salido, believe it or not, after a weigh-in that he didn't make weight at, gained 20 pounds. Right? So Salido starts doing the one thing that would almost guarantee that this fight doesn't go the distance. He starts a withering body attack on Lomachenko. Just in case there were questions about Lomachenko's stamina, now you have a guy hitting him with stamina-depleting body shots. Right? And Salido was very good at it. His right hand to the body was particularly effective. So I was sitting down, waiting for the Redwoods to fall in this fight. Someone was going to get knocked out. Incredibly, the fight went the distance. Less beer for us. Somewhere, someone is getting comped at a casino courtesy of the bet I made on this fight. Just food for thought, okay? Um, I'll say this. The pace wasn't as robust as I would have liked, right? Lomachenko did not throw a lot of punches. Maybe that's why the fight went the distance. He didn't return fire with fire. Orlando Salido was there working on his mid section. Right? The referee, Lawrence Cole, allowed punches on the belt line. That's fair. I understand some punches strayed low, but people need to understand that as Salido is throwing punches, Lomachenko is moving. I didn't get the feeling that there were deliberate low blows. This didn't strike me as the Abner Maris Joseph Agbeko fight. Right? This was a little bit different. I'll agree there were multiple low blows. But I didn't believe that that was Salido's intention. Right? Well, let me just say, Lomachenko, surprisingly, didn't pick up the volume in my opinion. Right? He didn't swing for the fences. He's getting hit with a lot of low blows. He's hanging around Salida. He's close enough to get hit with low blows. And he didn't try to, you know, rough Salido back up. Not until the later rounds. Right? So that was a bit surprising. I was surprised at the stamina. I was surprised at the lack of volume from Vasil Lomachenko. Right? Also, Salido has a history of stopping guys in the mid to late rounds, right? Look at his two fights against Juan Manuel Lopez, right? Salido's really a guy who hits you with a bunch of punches. And then you start feeling those punches as the fight progresses, right? As they said on the telecast, he doesn't throw a lot of jabs. He's throwing a lot of power shots. I was surprised that Lomachenko was able to take his power. Right? Of all the fights this weekend, this one surprised me the most. I was dead wrong on this fight. Right? Let me just point out, too, that Salido is exactly the kind of dangerous veteran who young prodigy types need to be aware of. Right? He's still in his prime. He's in his early 30s. Right? He's cagey enough to not throw a lot of jabs. He's cagey enough to have two-handed attacks to the body while leaving himself not open for quick up, you know, quick counters up top. Right? Salido is a complicated fighter, 
this was too much too soon for Lomachenko. Right? Understand if you don't count the World Series of Boxing exhibition fights. This was only Lomachenko's second pro fight. Right? Now let's talk about the third fight. And this fight was the most upsetting fight of the weekend for me. And yes, I admit I'm whining because I got this one wrong. And this is the fight between Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. and Brian Vera. Right? In my opinion, Brian Vera left this fight on the table. Right? I believe, and it's sour grapes. I'm not here to say it's anything other than sour grapes. I believe Brian Vera could have won this fight. Right? But, curiously, he got thrown off his game plan, and I believe it cost him. Now let's talk about Chavez. Chavez is an excellent fighter inside. Right? You've heard me talk about fighters who can fight inside. This guy's one of them. Right? Chavez is the kind of guy who can fight a Sebastian Zvik and rough him up on the inside and negate his boxing prowess. Right? He's particularly good when he gets you up on the ropes. Right? Then he's able to shorten up his punches, use his size, impose himself on you. You know, have you lodged against his shoulder as he rips apart your rib cage? Right? That's his game. But, in my opinion, and I know this is against public opinion, I believe Chavez Jr. is limited on the outside. He does have a good left hook he can throw from distance. Right? But to me, that's about it. I think he can be outboxed. I'm not that impressed with his boxing skills from the outside. Also, I consider Chavez Jr. to be poorly conditioned. Right? His volume isn't that great. Look at the CompuBox numbers for the Sebastian Zvik fight. You're going to see that he was outthrown in that fight. Look at the first Brian Vera fight. You're going to see that Chavez Jr. threw a very low volume of punches. Even look at the ending of this fight. You'll see that Chavez Jr. hit a wall in this fight. Right? I don't think that's ever going to change. I believe hunger is a big part of boxing. Right? You have guys out there waking up early in the morning, doing a lot of road work, passing up donuts, right? You know, forcing themselves to stay in shape even when they don't have scheduled fights, right? You have guys dreaming of the title. You have guys dreaming of keeping the title, right? I don't believe this is one of those guys. I think this is a guy who isn't self-motivated. I believe he has to be pushed. That's why Freddie Roach is no longer in his corner. That's why his own promoter, Bob Arrow, is talking about how this guy needs to get a higher level of trainer. Right? Understand, I believe that when this guy is in training camp, they're raised eyebrows. So to me, the key to beating Chavez Jr., is movement in the middle of the ring behind a jab. It's to keep him turning. You don't want to be on the ropes. You don't want him inside. You need to keep him outside. You can't have a fight with him. He hits hard. You have to have a boxing match. Right? Think Floyd Mayweather against Robert the Ghost Guerrero, right? Mayweather is moving in that fight. He's keeping Guerrero guessing in that fight, right? He's not lounging out too much by the ropes. Rather, he's moving. He's keeping the fight away from the ropes, Right? That's how you deal with this fighter. 
Now, I thought Brian Vera comes out. I thought if you go back and if you look at the second round of this fight, that second round is exactly how to beat Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. Right? Vera is on his game early. He's on his game in the second round. In my opinion, and it's sour grapes, you're hearing the losing side of the bet here. All he had to do was make every round the second round. He had the blueprint. You want the blueprint? It's there on film. Right? Why is Vera, against a bigger man, standing and trading with him? Why is Vera over at the side of the ropes? Why is Vera grinning and nodding his head when Chavez Jr. hits him? You don't want to have a dialogue with your opponent. Forget your opponent. If you have the blueprint, you're just in there connecting the dots. You're in there knowing, look, this guy, this guy's not a boxer from distance. Right, this, this guy wants to impose his size on me. He can't do that as long as I'm hard to find and I'm moving in the ring. This guy's lower volume than me. When I'm pumping a jab, right? Chavez Jr. starts out the fight with decent volume. I'm not here to say otherwise. You knew we couldn't maintain that. And so I'd like to know why Brian Vera ever got away from the jab? Because it wasn't like Chavez Jr. ever solved it. Right? Why get away from the jab? Is there is there some dynamic with Chavez Jr. that I'm missing? I'll throw that question out to the YouTube Nation. I know Chavez Jr. is a popular fighter. At least he was popular. Notice here there were thousands of empty seats. I believe the public has figured out that Chavez Jr. isn't always prepared for fights. Right? And so, Vera's excuse here is that he thought it was a 10-round fight and not a 12-round fight. Right? Well, let me just say this. He still should have been pumping the jab. That's not an excuse not to pump the jab, right? I would expect Chavez Jr. to fall apart against an opponent with mobility who can work behind a jab, right? I would expect that fight to be lopsided. In fact, wait a moment. Haven't we already seen that fight? Sergio Martinez against Chavez Jr., right? Didn't Martinez win something like 11 of 12 rounds? Right? Think about it. That's how you beat Chavez Jr. What was Brian Vera doing trying to knock out Chavez Jr.? Brian, you didn't need the statement. Leave with the win. Take care of the win first. Right? Don't try to go Billy Kahn early in the fight. What's that about? So to me, I still question Chavez Jr., Right? I, you know, it's sour grapes. Chavez Jr. beat me on this one. Chavez Jr., if you ever watch my videos, let me say congratulations. Right? But I still question him. Right? I still wonder what happens when a guy doesn't get lured into a slugfest against this guy. Right? Brian Vera, in my opinion, beat him the first time. Brian Vera, in my opinion, just look at the second round, should have beat him the second time. What's sad with this fight is Brian Vera was the one who finished strong. Think about it. So, Brian, if you had the stamina, what are you doing getting off your game plan? I'm guessing the guys are in the ring. They view Chavez Jr. as smug. Then they think to themselves, because they're fighters, I'm going to take this guy out. Wrong strategy. Wrong game plan. He's a big guy who can fight inside. Don't get inside with him. Right? So I lost that fight. I'm not happy about it. Right? I'll be keeping an eye on Chavez Jr.'s career. But I suspect, right, he's going to 
bite off more than he can chew real soon, right? I don't think Chavez Jr. lives up to the hype. And I say that as someone just beaten by him. My recommended play in this fight was to take Brian Vera, hedged with Chavez Jr. by KO, right? I thought Chavez Jr.'s only chance would be to win by KO. That was, of course, until Brian Vera curiously went from the middle of the ring to up on the ropes during the middle rounds of this fight, right? I hope Brian Vera looks at the film. I hope he sees how he had the upper hand with the jab. I don't know what these guys were saying to each other in the ring, but somehow Chavez Jr. convinced Brian Vera to trade with him. That was a mistake. Let me also say this too, and I know Chavez Jr. hits hard, but does he hit as hard at 168? This is the second fight between the two guys where Brian Vera has gone the distance, right? Think about it. Keep in mind, Brian Vera gained weight to fight at 168, right? What happens when Chavez Jr. hops in the ring with, let's say, James DeGale? Let's say Andre Ward, right? He could be embarrassed in both of those fights. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Thanks for stopping by.